Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to another Game Maker tutorial. Now, this tutorial is actually going to be is is going to reference my new book that I'm writing. It's called Game Maker Language: An In Depth Guide, and I'm actually going to put a link right here on the screen. If you're interested in finding out more about this book, you can click on this link and find out more. Now. In today's tutorial, I'm going to talk about arrays, and um, specifically, I'm going to talk about a one-dimensional array and how you could use it in a simple inventory system. So, uh, first thing I did is I created um, these three sprites. This is the player, and then I created a blue item and a red item, and then I created three objects and there's nothing inside of the item objects as you can see they're just an empty object with a sprite and then inside the player object there's just one step event and inside the step event all there is is keyboard checks with uh, moving the X position and the Y position and um, literally all that does is it just allows me to use the arrow keys to move the player around in the room and I'm going to show you that real quick um, it doesn't doesn't do anything magical or super fancy so you can see that I can move the player around in the room awesome and if you need to um, I'm gonna pause right or you can pause right here I'm not gonna pause but you can pause right here and copy this down um, into your code or into your game. Now, let's open up the player object and add in a new create event. And inside this create event, we're gonna do a triple slash, which is a special kind of comment um, that just uh, whatever we put here will show up right here. And that's useful to help us find stuff in our code. So we're gonna put create the inventory. Now I'm going to do this the hard way and later in a second part I'm going to show you the easy way to do this but the hard way is to go inventory. Oh first of all though I want to explain uh, so a, an array is kind of like a variable only the array can hold more than one value. So it's normally you have a variable like name equals Ben, right? It's a simple, um, here's, the, here's the variable identifier with the, the assignment operator and then the name Ben, which is the value of this variable. Now with an, with an array, you could do something like names zero equals Ben names one equals John. Now, uh, this is using an array and literally we're, this is, wow, arrays are easy, right? Like you're already doing it. This is just a way that you can have one variable for multiple different names. And these work great for inventory systems. So let's start out by creating our inventory system. Inventory zero equals negative one. Now I'm using the value negative one for an empty inventory box. Inventory one equals negative one. And I probably should have mentioned, but arrays always start out at zero. So this is the first slot in the array, and this is the second slot in the array. Inventory two equals negative one. And we're only gonna create three inventory boxes and we've already done it it's done wow that's awesome so let's go into uh let's add a draw event to our player because we want to draw um these inventory boxes on the screen so i'm going to drag over a code and we're going to do draw text and we're going to do um let's do 32 for the x position and we'll do 32 for the Y position. And then we're going to do string inventory zero. And that's it. And what this is going to do is it's going to draw the contents 
which is going to be negative 1, right? It's going to draw negative 1. But it's going to draw the contents of our first slot in the array at 32 and 32 on the screen, these x and y coordinates. And string, all string does is it makes sure to change this value into a text value or a string value because you can't draw a number. It has to be changed into a text or a string. So for example, this is a string value 3 and this is the number 3 and in code they're different so we're taking this and turning it into this with this function right here. So now we're going to do draw text 32 we're going to do the same at x position and our y position is going to be 64 string inventory 1 we're drawing the second slot in the array draw text 32 um, 80 no uh, <laughs> 32 times 3 I don't want to do the math in my head right now there's a lot of pressure okay I'm being filmed so let's do that and we're drawing whoops that was a mistake that should have been a 2 we're drawing the third slot, the third position in the inventory, but because it starts at zero, it's going to be inventory two. That's what we're going to be doing. So now I'm going to put a comment up here at the top. Draw the contents of the array. And we're going to do draw self because um, this is our player object and we want the player to draw. If you do a draw event, it, it cancels the draw self, which is just an automatic um, thing that happens. So you have to manually do it. Now, if we run our game, and wait for it to compile, which it's taking a little bit, uh, you will see we've got negative one, negative one, negative one. Those are three inventory slots right now. And uh, generally it'd be better to draw them maybe horizontally. People are more used to that with an inventory system or down here, like kind of like Minecraft. But for now, I'm doing it this way because of the next part and you're gonna see that. So if we come in our room, every single instance, which, um, so an object is kind of like, kind of like the, is kind of like a, uh, a cookie cutter right and then an instance is kind of like the cookie that that cookie cutter makes so each of these little uh, blue these are uh, dots these are instances of this object and each instance in the room has its very own unique identifier and it's just a number that you can use to reference to this instance. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a collision event into our player. So add collision event with object blue item. And we're going to write a code here that for experienced programmers they're going to kind of cringe a little bit but um, in part two I'll explain a better way to do this that will make all of those experienced programmers happy. Um, Add the item to the inventory. And we're just going to do an if statement. If inventory 0 equals negative 1. Basically, if it's empty, inventory 0 equals other dot id. So and do with other instance destroy. So what does this do? This says if the first slot, the first slot in our inventory is empty, equal to negative one or empty with this comparison operator, inventory first slot equals other dot id. Now other in a collision event refers to whatever you're colliding with. So this is going to be what? 
the blue item object or one of those instances. We're going to grab that ID and put it inside our inventory. Then we're going to actually destroy the other instance. So with other or with the blue object instance, destroy. Okay. Now I'm actually going to add um, a couple more of these in right here. And I'm just going to do a backspace right there and do else because these are going to be else ifs, else if, and I'm going to do inventory slot two and slot three, which is one and two. Okay. Now we've got these different, we've got them all set up um, to where we should be able to uh, pick up multiple instances of the same object now. So if we come into the room and we should be able to, and you'll see it, you'll see the ID, you'll, you'll be able to watch the, that, that inventory slot, grab the ID of that instance. So boom, right there. So that instance was this ID number right here. And then if we come over and try and grab another one, Boom, it puts it in the second slot of our inventory because the first one's already filled. And um, if we want to finish this up, we can do, uh, we can duplicate this right here, duplicate collision with the red item. And now we can actually pick up all three items. But as you can see, they don't currently stack. Um, if I pick up two blue items, it uses two inventory slots instead of using one inventory slot and stacking. Now I promise that when I do the second part to this video t tomorrow, I will show you how to stack the items in the inventory and uh, uh, we'll continue from there. But this has been the first part to this video on inventories slash one dimensional arrays. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure and I'll put another link right here. Be sure and check out my book. Um, my book is going to explain a lot more about one dimensional arrays and also two dimensional arrays. And it's, I've been really excited because there's been a lot of interest in the book. And so it's got me really excited about it. I'm going to put a lot of information in it and hopefully it'll help you out. So thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, favorite, share, and subscri subscribe. And I will talk to you guys later.